Hello, my name is John Rose. In this video, I want to take a closer look at something that I'm pretty sure most of us are searching for in our lives, and it's that warm, fuzzy feeling that most of us are looking for, and we usually search outside of ourselves for the solution, which is why we turn to the wrong food, or sex, or drugs, or money, or relationships, and never really finding what we're missing. And, and I know deep down all of us know something's not right, something's amiss. We're missing something. And that's the reason why we search for all these other things to make us fill that void. And we'll never be happy until we finally realize, well, what are we missing? And what we're missing actually is one of our senses. What we're, we're missing is a nutrient <clears throat> that feeds this one sense. So over 40 years ago, a scientist discovered what we're missing and explains why we don't know how to behave and why we have all these problems because this nutrient helps our cells communicate. So what is the opposite of communication? Communication, chaos. I can't think of a better world, a word to describe our world than chaos. If we're out of control now, we need to be controlled. So this is what we have to realize. Conditions wouldn't exist in this world if the world wasn't the way it was already. So there are no people who take advantage of people unless there's something wrong with them. And that's what we have to realize, that we've done something that destroyed one of our senses. It destroyed the biophoton. Dr. Pop proved it, invented it in Instrument in 1974. So you might say, we found the, uh, the missing nutrient, or we found that warm, fuzzy feeling. It's this biophoton that allows cells to say, hey, yeah, I feel one with everything, you see? We don't feel that connection. Think of a biophoton as a little miniature cell phone. We all have them inside our cells, but how good is your reception or how strong is your battery? You're on the grid, but yet it's really weak. We have a weak connection. That's why I came up with 10 subsequent needs from having a weak connection. An abnormally low biophoton level that I coined hypoheliosis, jokingly in a way, because we shouldn't focus on the symptoms, but if there's ever a symptom we should focus on, we should focus on what I know to be the most common disease and the most dangerous disease ever since the fall of mankind because that's the main thing that that mistake did that really put us down where we are, where we lost one of our senses and we're like the six blind men from India with very limited perception and it's hard to get out of the cave. That's kind of where we are as a species. We, 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 we don't learn to, to look within, and even when we look within, within, that's no guarantee that we're gonna find what we need to look for. Because a lot of people don't know about these biophotons, a lot of people don't know how to live, and the wrong way of life is part of our tradition. That's why it's so hard to break away from this. We want to teach our children what our parents taught us, but we have to realize what our parents taught us, part of that was wrong. So we're teaching our children the same mistakes and in effect, all of our problems begin in childhood. Because every seven, -year -old, every seven year old child has already been taught long ago to repeat the same mistakes that put us where we are on the wrong path. Where we're destroying the biophotons and then we go searching for some warm fuzzy feeling, right? That's when we turn to the wrong food and sex and drugs and money and relationships, searching outside of ourselves. The solution lies within and understanding that, whoa, my cell phone battery needs a charge. Let's get plugged in. And once we do that, then that's the way we can be organized as a species. Right now we know with the Salinsky's three-legged stool analogy that we have three legs in this stool. We've got the, the big money, the big corporations, the people who, the small group that own, own, own and control everything. Then we have the government. Uh, and then we also have the masses of people. And if we, the masses, are not organized, the other two will get organized and control us. But remember, the small group of people uses all of our things that we need as a weapon system. That includes food and air and water. It includes subsequent needs like money and government and media and education. And remember, the ultimate solution to deal with all those problems is to go after that warm, fuzzy feeling the right way, get reconnected, and then we won't have subsequent needs from having a weak connection. You see, if we go back far enough, 
and look for, at the very first thing we did, well, I think a good place to start would be what everyone said was the worst mistake of all. What was that for worst mistake? Some people call it original sin. They go, oh my God, they're talking religion. Oh, blank, blank that out. I go, that's, ho that's hokum. Don't want to go there. Look, man, you got to realize that there's wisdom everywhere and that we're so sick as a species that we infiltrate all these great books and we manipulate a few things here and there. And some people cannot handle the difference between black and white. They can't handle gray and that's too much for them. So this is another way the uni uniqueness of ourselves enters into this journey of ours is that many of us are at certain levels of how to, to deal with being on the wrong path uh, in, in this hell that these dark ages we live in. And, uh, and, and very few really understand or ever figure out that, that what, the soul, what the root cause of all of this is and how if we don't address that issue, then we'll never see things change. Think of it this way. Our species made a mistake a long time ago. What was it? Disobedience. It didn't matter what it was, they disobeyed. No, wait a second. That's intentionally vague to make sure you don't know what it is. It takes away your responsibility if you're going to accept that as a positive, effective, reasonable solution. It's not. What did we do? But more importantly, are we still doing it? I'm, I found what it was. I know what it was. I'm not, I don't have any doubt at all that this is the first big mistake we made. Because I know what it does when we pollute our food with fire. It damages it in so many ways. The biophotons is just at the top of the list. You don't like the biophoton idea at all. Throw it all out. We got plenty of other reasons why we shouldn't alter our food and then have it in turn alter us. And we get all these warning signs and we're so sick that our experts treat the symptoms. And they're all lifestyle related. There are no treatments for things that we do except to stop doing it. That's the whole idea of not focusing on downstream solutions for problems that originate upstream. If everybody's falling in the river upstream, stop spending all your time pulling the people out of the water, but let's go up here and build a bridge. Let's keep the people from going into the river. Let's not make the very first mistake that put us down into the dark ages. Read all the books that talk about this, uh, and what you'll see is that, that they, all told, they all told the same message that there was a time before man had this other type of evil about himself. Wasn't that way before, but something happened. That fall of mankind did something to him. And I also know that, that that mistake allowed us to start eating things we weren't meant to eat, and some of the things we ate even made that dark side worse, and that's evident by looking at certain cultures who have made various mistakes and finding out that the ones who omitted the second mistake where we're now eating animals we're not biolo biologically adapted to eat but opted out and they're still using the first mistake of cooking the food and applying it to f other plant foods we're not supposed to be eating but the plant the people that ate the plant foods even though they were void of these biophotons they didn't have the warlike tendencies that the people who made the second mistake where we started eating animals we are so far removed the vast majority of us from the actual act of doing it and then the rest of us have been conditioned to think, you got to have it. So, hey, I'm not going to feel bad about killing us. You know, that happens in nature all over the place. Got to do it. Got to do it. Got to get my protein. Another one of those false beliefs that take away our responsibility because we don't look into a possibility that we should not get our protein. And yet, I, it's, I'm getting, uh, I, I've been right at the 30-year mark now of not eating animal protein. I don't feel like I'm losing out in any way. I don't think I could be feeling as great as I do right now had I ever kept going that direction. In fact, I'm probably be dead right now because I had a 20 pound cesspool inside me and I know because I flushed it out by doing the first of a three step process that I created. And you can go down to the description box below and you can see a seminar I gave. First listen to the Dr. Roba interview to give you an idea of what you're gonna look like around three weeks into it. And trust me, for most of us, the journey up until then is just spectacular. I've got to get my highlighter out when I'm working with people and highlighting all the great things so if they start thinking twice about the effort it takes to do this program, I go, no, wait a minute. <laughs> Look back on day three and day five and day seven <laughs> and let's see, how much weight did you lose? And it's more important to lose anything else because it doesn't belong inside you. Oh my God, if you were to have run or walked, you'd have to have run or walk 100 miles. Now, do you either want to go in there and do a little bit of an hour worth of work doing this 
or you want to go out and run 100 miles. Well, you can walk it, <laughs> just take you a little longer. So put things in perspective. Uh, to take responsibility, responsibility means that we have to be willing to admit that we might have false knowledge. And I find that interesting that whenever fi people find the knowledge we need or whenever people find out there is a small group of people controlling us, they both scream the same thing to everybody. False knowledge, false knowledge. <laughs> I just got to let you guys know about it. That's the solution. Well, when you look at the people ruling the world, we need to know about it, that to do downstream work and, and undo the crap they've done. But you need to understand, more importantly, what's happening upstream. And why does that happen? And why do we have this? Are we creating it? We are. That means we can destroy it. This is a reflection of being disconnected, hypoheliosis. And with all behavior, you're going to have extremes, like a bell-shaped curve, where 96% of us are in the middle, 2% are saints, and 2% are psychopaths. Maybe one, maybe 98, one and one. <laughs> Who knows where those numbers are, but you get the point. Can't cut the edges of the bell off if we don't like the edges of the bell. The bell itself has to change. And that's where we actually play a role. And my ultimate goal with how, mo help, helping motivate everybody is to give you as many reasons as I can think of why you'd want to do this. And hopefully with enough why, you'll have a reason to do it. Uh, and I never know what's going to actually motivate one particular person. Uh, so uh, one reason why we'd want to do this is obvious. We're going to crawl out of a rut we didn't know was it. That's not obvious. We'll wait till you do it. Don't you want to find out if that's true? If a small fraction of what I'm saying is true, you'd be a fool not to at least look into it. And that's exactly how I felt about it. And that's why I finally did it. it and it turned out to be the most exciting experience I've ever done. So if you're looking for that one for the fuzzy feel, and if you're tired of looking at, if you're searching for the wrong food or sex or drugs or money or relationships and hitting dead ends every time, then look within bump up the coherent sunlight energy that you're supposed to store in the nucleus of your cells, you'll start feeling a connection in a way that you kind of felt when you're a little kid, but then it gets stronger and even better. So according to Dr. Fitz Albert Pop, we're born at 43,000 biophotons, most of us around 1,000 to 23,000, we're supposed to be at 83,000. My first step according to Pop goes to 114. So let's bump up the biophotons, let's get reconnected, let's flush out the cesspool that that is in, our, our, in, in all of our excretory organs, our colon, uh, clean up the lymph system, um, become the best that you can be, and, and continue on and realize how great this world would be if we all felt this way. It would change our collective mentality, and we'd no longer compete for all these resources on this extremely abundant planet. We would realize that we should sh uh, cooperate and share the abundances this planet has to offer, and that since we are connected to everything, then there's only one way to make our lives better, and that's to make everything we're connected to better. Think what would happen if we had that mentality, that we'd want to go out and try to make everything around me better. How you did that? Well, you know, let's build a river over here. <laughs> Got a whole bunch of people want to be part of that project. Or let's beautify this area we built a long time ago. My family's been in this section for generations. And we focus on this section right here. Look at it, isn't it pretty? So that's what we would be doing. We wouldn't be wasting our time making a whole bunch of money that shouldn't be how we think of things uh, for only a small group of people where they are able to siphon it off. And most of us are totally oblivious to how the whole thing works. It's very easy to, to trick people about things as complicated as money and economics or even medicine until you find out that health isn't complicated at all. We just got to satisfy our needs. There's two groups of them. There's an ideal diet and an ideal world. We don't live in an ideal world anymore. We have another group of needs. We start with the diet because that's where we're making our biggest mistakes. Not our only mistakes, but we start with that one. And that's where I've identified five big mistakes we make. And when you do my first step, you correct those on a temporary basis. The big thing we'll correct is the first mistake. We're not going to do the fall of mankind no more. And you're going to start climbing your way out of hell. And you go, hey, this is fun. I'm having fun up here now. I'm getting older, but I don't feel any older. I feel just like a kid. No different, not one iota than I did when I was 10 years old. That's for myself. I was biking home the other day, and, and I was thinking those exact thoughts, and I was just really having fun and getting into it, and, and I didn't feel any different than I did when I was 10. Actually, I feel better now than I ever felt in my life, and I'll be 62 in just uh, within a couple weeks. Uh, 
it's indescribable how I feel now. I'm running up steps or running upstairs uh, effortlessly like I never have. Uh, I'm starting to sprint, and I don't hardly ever do that on the ground. I do it all the time on my bike, but I did it the other day, uh, a couple weeks ago rather, and I couldn't believe my, fa my feet were moving faster than I ever remember them. And why is that? Because of what I eat. Now, sure, I'm fairly active. I still am in front of the computer most of the day, and I got to escape into the woods and ride up my bike for a long distance. Um, so I'm in pretty good shape that way. My upper body, I only spend five minutes a day, three times a week, unless I start using my body weight, which I prefer because I get much better results, and then I'll do it for 10 or 15 minutes a day, three times a week. That's why I get better results. I'm doing it longer. It takes longer to fatigue your body when you only use your body weight. So that's all I do uh, to maintain my upper body mass. It only takes that short period of time. Uh, but the main reason why I'm feeling so good is because I'm not committing the fall of mankind. I'm not spoiling my food with fire. I'm eating my, my, my food unfired, unaltered. I want those biophotons. Now, do we have to be 100%? Now, that's a great question. Who knows? I'd love, you know, if Dr. Pop has this meter, if we had a meter, we'd go, okay, this person's 100%, this person's 95, this person's 90. No difference. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Whoa, look at the drop. Do you want to drop your connection? It's exciting to think about where we could go if we could correct one mistake. And if we correct the first mistake, guess what? We're not going to be making the second mistake or the third mistake or the fourth mistake or the fifth mistake. So we start with the first mistake, just like we start with the first step. And that is where we take back control over gluttony. That's why my first step addresses a way to control things that are controlling us. So it's, uh, it's time to get excited about a whole new life you could create. And it begins by taking the first step. And you can go down to my description box below and take the first step of my three-step process. And my friends, I guarantee you, when you do this, you're in for a treat.